before we get into this bonus episode of LA Meekly, we would just like to politely ask with all consideration completely genuflected <laughs> with our noses to the ground we want to humbly submit to you the option to support this independent little show on patreon for as little as five dollars a month we will send you a handwritten postcard every month if you do this right when this episode comes out you'll still make it in to be recorded for our next episode because we'll also uh, mention your name at the beginning of the next episode thanking you but yeah five dollars a month we'll send you a handwritten postcard from la and it's so helpful and it also keeps this little rinky dink show going i've been looking to add another floor to my yacht and i'm five dollars away a month <laughs> <laughs> paying off all the people i need to pay off and bribe and i just, I just need, need five five more dollars so please help us put a fourth floor on greg's yacht <laughs> and to do that you could go to patreon.com slash la meekly and you can support us right there and we love you april fools it's like you three weeks blanking. late, isn't it? <laughs> we recorded this not even on April Fool's, but we can't get it out of our system. I didn't get to scream that loudly into a microphone this year, so yeah. I felt uh, now was the time. But what we've got here for you today is no fool. We've got a bonus interview for all of you right now with Lauda. Tejeda, host of Ali Taco's Life with Lauda. We were a guest on, I want to say, a moment ago. St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, it was St. Patrick's, Saint Patrick's Day. Day. St. Patrick's Day fools. I've been wanting to say that also. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's the host. Uh, notice how I made you pronounce her name because I famously got torn to pieces for the way I pronounced her name, like a little gringo white boy like I am. I love it when something happens to you and you're like, well, it famously happened. <laughs> <laughs> As the the annals of history have noted I had my pants pulled down it and I was spanked on live stream camera in front of the whole world for mispronouncing her name with a little gringo white boy accent. As everybody's been having nightmares about since <laughs> it happened. The most famous public <laughs> dressing down the world has seen in the past two months. I was banned from LA Taco for 10 years <laughs> after what I did. What happened to you opened the door for what happened at the office. <laughs> <laughs> that fateful evening. That fateful evening when I was at Trader Joe's and I couldn't find anywhere to stand to read about it because people were like, I want to get those pasta and you're in the way because you're trying to read. <laughs> I'm going to do what I saw on TV to you. <laughs> what I saw this still image of to you. So if you haven't watched that, you should watch. No, we're not talking yes. about Will Smith again. But if you haven't watched our time on LA Taco Live, it was a bacchanal is the best way I could describe it, where we try to teach LA history to some people from LA Taco and they are drunk as hell and it's and hilarious it's all on youtube for you to watch if you want that but then afterwards uh mm -hmm. days later once everyone had sobered up we interviewed <laughs> laura see i can pronounce it <laughs> you're getting there you're for sure getting there. i'm almost yeah. there we interviewed her about la taco what it's like to work for la taco and her personal instagram account about east los angeles which we'll get into yeah we talked mostly about just how, how she got started with la taco which i was most interested in because i knew that she had kind of it's kind of yeah it's kind of a crazy blogger, story and she's a great host and a really great interview too if you want to watch her la taco show we're not on it uh, every week which is a shame <laughs> uh, it's every thursday at 4 p.m mm -hmm. live and it's yeah. youtube.com slash la taco but she's had great guests on before and i've been slowly like starting to go through their backlog felipe esparza was on recently yeah they have all sorts of like they had i think the week before we were on was like one of the city council members or somebody <laughs> right yeah. and then we came <laughs> as we all <laughs> always come uh, wherever there's a city council member we're sure to be there a week later yeah seeing if they dropped anything on the ground if we can collect <laughs> it and try to trade it in for blackmail that's how blackmail works. it's trade right blackmail is just trading it's okay. a blackmail scratcher that we hope <laughs> is a winner and we got some free hats out of it at the end we got some free hats out of it uh like hundreds of them we have so many free hats you read the story about the the hat peddler and the monkeys take them because he has a tall stack of hats Cap that's us uh is it caps for sale or is it blueberries is for sale why would it be blueberries for sale? It's probably because, caps for sale. Because there's, it's cap. I think it's caps for sale. But then there's a book called Blueberries for Sale that I always think is blueberries for sale. And I'm thinking, oh. like, are these people in the same marketplace? 
Anyway, I'm getting back into stand up. <laughs> you, all of my bits are about how I read things wrong. Yeah, for when I was a child. That's my brand is that I'm dumb and I won't let it go. Stupid man who grew up from a, a child with mild potential. <laughs> Stupid child who grew up maladjusted. That's my brand. <laughs> That's my identity. So yeah, if you want to follow her on her Instagram account, it is Hungry in Eastlos. On Twitter, she is at Lauda. The Islos. If you're new to us, you can listen to our regular show where we talk about history, first of the month. Check us out there. I, you know, Apple Podcasts, wherever uh, you want it. <laughs> And wherever you need it, you got it. And this is where we start singing Roy Orbison. Crying? Can we sing Crying? Can we sing Blue Bayou? That's always the wrong song. Enjoy our uh, interview with Laura Tejeda. So thank you for joining us. We're talking to Lauda from LA Taco, who's a Well let's let's her let's let her explain who she is. I wrote where, a what way. website she is coming from. <laughs> My name is Laura, or as some call me Laura, and then I uh, proceed to fucking them up. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading your name on the Zoom right now, and I think I, I, I know how to pronounce that name. <laughs> uh, I am the host of the LA Taco Live with Laura show on YouTube. Going to be a podcast. We're turning it into podcast cast form too. Really? I'm also an educator on the side. I run an Instagram page called Hungry and Islos. Let me tell you my side gigs first. Okay, I yeah, run please. that page and that's just <laughs> because I enjoy shouting out people of color owned and family owned businesses and restaurants and like food pop-ups in and around East LA. And I started that in 2016. And then I also work as an educator for my full-time job, as if that is not enough. And I am the assistant director of a cultural center that does uh, programming focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and then cultural education. So Uh, yeah, I'm like, am I allowed to say on here? I, I, it's up to you. Yeah, one of the local universities, because after that drunk history, I might not have my job. It's it's Harvard. <laughs> it's Harvard. West Harvard. An Ivy League. In- yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's a school in the Boston area, <laughs> and we all know how Boston feels about drinking. They they frown upon it. Yeah, clearly, don't do it there, especially on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> I was going through, you know, some of your videos and some of the things that you've written and I wanted to create like kind of like a a questions and it ended up just being a list of food in the city to eat. (laughs) Thousand percent. I'm like, what do you do, Laura? Oh, food. What do you enjoy doing? Oh, food. Food. What are you talking about? Food. What part? Where where are you? You grew up. I assume you grew up in the city. Yeah. You're from here. Which part exactly? I was born in Bellflower, but I don't claim that because who <laughs> knows where the fuck Bellflower is. One, two, it wasn't my mom's fault. Kaiser was there. Three, <laughs> I'm from East Los, so I was um, raised in East LA my entire life, and we have generations and generations here. Yeah, it's not Boyle Heights because people f- try to fight me whenever I say I'm there, <laughs> but it's neighboring Boyle Heights, and I'm right in the I'm right in East Los. Close to Montebello, close to Monterey Park, but also okay. close to El Sereno, also close to Lincoln Heights. And and the neighborhood I actually grew up in is City Terrace. Okay. So it's okay. a little un, unincorporated um, city or town. I don't even know what the fuck they call it. Uh, but. I think it might be a neighborhood. What's your streets, if you don't mind saying? Oh, wait, <laughs> down or me? You. Uh, uh, he knows Harris. my street. He knows exactly where <laughs> I, I know. Where, I know where this guy lives. It's not. He's impressive. trying to triangulate where you live. <laughs> yeah. You are pointing at me, like given how the squares are set up. But I'm like, I forget that pointing at the computer is not the same as pointing at a person in real life, which is also rude. Yeah. <laughs> what streets are you from? <laughs> I'm not comfortable saying the hardcore, hardcore ones. Okay, yeah, yeah, I'm real close to Caesar Chavez, okay. um, and on the other side, Pomeroy. Okay, I'm, try- I'm trying to figure out what food is close to you. Oh, okay, yeah, all of it. All of it. All of it. You. Mentioned mentioned where it says where your where your local kaiser was because my <laughs> my uh whenever i have to put like what's where were you born and i have to always on my sec- well i shouldn't be saying we're giving up too much information i was you know, gonna right? say what i put on my security questions like, y'all want y'all want my fucking passport number <laughs> <laughs> if you could send some dna over that would be super duper thank you let's just say that the location of the kaiser i was born in 
I'm not proud to say, like, that's where I was born. <laughs> Simi Valley. Thank you, everybody. I'm Daniel Zafrin. <laughs> <laughs> like, they have hospitals there. Yeah, so uh, born and raised Islos, and my grandpa migrated here. Mm-hmm. So the house that I actually live in is a part of a strip of property he purchased. Oh, wow, really? When when my when my dad was a kid. So he, we have a we have generational uh, land here in Islos. Wow. So <laughs> it means more to me because of that, because they have their histories. Like I shared with y'all on our show, my grandparents met at the Grand Central Market. I think I said that on the show. You did, yeah. Yeah. I'll remind you what you said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even today, I was. I want to have my dad on the show too, and just I love hearing people's historical. You know, like what their experiences were on the streets yeah. that look so different now. And today I was talking about going to Denver. I'm going to visit Denver soon in April. Mm-hmm. And I said, I really wanted to see the Stanley Hotel because I'm a huge horror fan. And right. I've already seen one location in Portland, like the outside where they filmed. I forget right. what the heck the name of that place is. Yeah. 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 The one that's like behind a, a mountain or something. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I'm there in January of 2021. And so I was like, I want to go to the Stanley. And my dad was like, I saw the shining at the, when I, when I was on, on a forced date, because my dad's dramatic. <laughs> I, I did not fall off the tree. Let's just say yeah. that. I'm very much connected. Like, you think I'm a character? My dad is a thousand. And I was like, a forced date. I was like, where'd you go? And he's like, the Garfield. It used to be right there on Whittier Boulevard near Concourse, passing Garfield High School. And I was like, damn. And I'm thinking, like, I thought of y'all. I was like, we need to have these folks that grew up in these neighborhoods yeah. and how they've evolved, you know? I grew up in Echo Park and, and also in a legacy home. And I just love hearing, like, oh, yeah, there's like right by the gas station. There used to be a club and it was going great and everybody would party there. And then one guy got shot and they closed it down. I think it was like the <laughs> Susu Club. And like just hearing like weird double features that would like at theaters and that theater is now like a, the Mohawk Bend or something. And it's, oh, it's so strange. It's so weird to see, like, you know, our, your, our, our parents and our grandparents' generation talking about stuff that sound, sounds so idyllic. And then you get right. to us and like, oh, that's that's a medical center now. That place where <laughs> you met grandma was a, it's, it's a hospital now. Right. <laughs> so, so everything's a Kaiser. Everything's a Kaiser now. Yeah. <laughs> Hot spots. The Stanley Hotel is is pretty cool. I was there a few years ago, and it's uh, make sure to try to sneak up to the Shining Room. <laughs> Ooh, so they don't let you in because apparently my partner's aunt is gonna book a tour for us, and I'm like, Ooh. book at the spookiest time you can. I yeah. want to get fucking scared. I want to feel, even though it was all a movie, you know. But I want to feel the spirits. The the tour the tour they didn't take us upstairs. I don't know if it's just because it was the night tour and we couldn't be like knocking on these people's door. Like, can we see, can we see the bathtub? Is there a naked lady in the bathtub? I'm just c- curious real quick. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, it's my wife. But the, <laughs> like we, we managed to, because you have to, there's like a doorways you have to have a key to get through, but we were there when they were, the cleaning people were going through. So we snuck in and got to see everything. Uh, but you, you went, on, you went on the hotel. night tour. We were on the night tour, but then we came back the next day so that we could could sneak up and we got all of the we it was like oceans 11 we got all of the schedules of the cleaning crew to maybe i should tell them i'm gonna shoot a text right now and be like yo book the day tour night tour is not- well i don't know i don't know i, I don't want to be responsible for you not getting I'm scared. On you if I don't see the tub, okay? daniel you can you can talk to this was it true that the only way to get up was a snow cat that took two days to get up and by the time you got up it was already too late it's all true it's and all melissa true. got she got axed, axed when we, right away when we got almost immediately there. walking into the door so let's talk about so i wanted let's talk about not colorado <laughs> yeah great you jumped all over Don't me over. <laughs> you jumped over my hosting what were you gonna say because i had a question too sidebar for a minute whose question is better <laughs> i was just gonna ask how you got involved with la taco that's what i was gonna ask all right oh well, my question yeah, was we're on the same then. page. We, we love to see that. That's a great question. So it happened very interestingly. And I actually just had a Galentine's with all the women of LA Taco, and we all had similar stories. And I also think that just makes it dope because the universe just aligns a lot of us for mm. different reasons. I was a theater kid, always wanted to be out there, like meeting people, doing shit, didn't know how, got a master's in education, and I was like, I'm doing this work. And I do creative work in this in that realm, but around 2016, I started the food page mm-hmm. in order to do that. Like, how do I connect with community how do i do that like be funny online too you know whatever the heck fast forward to 2020 so four years later i'm a little more established and that folks know who i am and know that i post about food in east los i'm not a 
bougie food critic. Listen, I but I do want to get better in understanding and explaining. But my experience is my experience, and I also think that's valid. So Ali Taco, um, around the time of the George Floyd protests, there was a famous Carnitas vendor. Uh, they're about to open their brick and mortar, I think. See, because I'm not a hater and I, I do see them. <laughs> but Carnitas El Momo, I don't even know if I should name them because we stir up the drama. Oh, whatever that, name. That's my security answer. Is it? <laughs> Carnitas is my favorite, but I know they're really esteemed in the, in the neighborhoods. And so they were posting All Lives Matter on their Instagram Ooh. over and over and over. And a bunch of folks who are fans were like, yo, do you know what you're saying? Like in the comments, like kind of like lovingly calling them out is what I noticed at first. And yeah. then the person whose name is Billy, who verbally harassed me through Instagram for several months after the story, the story's coming, the story's coming, my bad. I, <laughs> I had a lot of like drama to it. I love, I love making stories longer than what they need to be. <laughs> Essentially, I, I commented also coming from a loving place. And I was like, hey, it's deeper than all lives really mattering. You know, like all lives do matter. But at this point in time, black folks are being targeted at higher and alarming rates. And clearly we, we're seeing them being criminalized and murdered. Right. Like the attack on black people is way higher at rates than any other than any other community. So right now we're standing up and this is why black lives matter is 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 what we're saying right now is what we're standing for. Sent it. Didn't think I said it disrespectfully enough to get trolls and I did it. But then Javier came into my DMs and I had known him. Like he's like a food god in my eyes. Yeah. I'm like, he's so cool. Him and his wife are like literally couples goals. And he's like, Hey, I saw your comment on Carnitas and Momo. Would you want to write a piece? And I said, the last thing I wrote, and I listen, I am a writer, but academic has been my writing, right? Mm-hmm. Like I, I think I wrote a children's poems book when I was maybe like eight, somewhere mm-hmm. tucked in my dad's <laughs> like drawer of all the things we did as kids. But I was like, write an article. I'm terrified. Like yeah. I've never done that. And I had actually p- talked about pitching to Ali Taco like years prior, but after I, I still laugh. I'm sure I still have it saved, but it was literally like, what's better? Burritos from Alan B's or burritos from Lupa's burrito. And like, <laughs> yeah, like that was my pitch. Old school ass burrito places that don't really need that attention. <laughs> it's not even a viral read, you know, all this stuff. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. He said, I'll guide you along the way. Ooh. If you need any support, I'm sure you got this. I really appreciated your comment. And I think this could be a powerful piece given everything that's happening right now. I think the title was This is Bigger Than Carnitas. How an anti or an anti black carnitas. I can't remember. Anti blackness and carnitas is in the title. And the community <laughs> was stirred. The community was like her first piece already stirring shit. <laughs> it's my personality type. So I said it figures, right? I got DMs from people saying, thank you so much. I feel so seen as like a black Mexican or as just a black person, like where you're addressing anti-blackness. And listen, I might have been very harsh, but I also claimed in the piece that we're all inherently born in an anti-black world. Like that's just by default, right? I have the capacity to, we all have the capacity to do things that are anti-black. I just happened to use Billy from Carnitas and Momo as an example because I, I shot him a DM. I said, hey, can you answer some questions? Like I, I did like, I did ask him his thoughts and he said he wouldn't use it again. I included that in the piece, but a lot of people lack critical reading skills and all they read was, <laughs> fuck, and Momo, don't support them and blah. Like, that's what I wrote. And yeah. so a lot of a lot of Latinx folks were like, you turn your back on your own people. And I was like, black people are my people. Like all this, like I, it was just, it was problematic, but that's how it started. That piece shortly after they asked me to write a piece about mystics cafe, which is a really dope goth coffee pop-up here in Islos. It posts up on a corner on the corner of Cesar Chavez and Rowan by the Superior and the CVS. I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with car wash. Is that where the big split is? No, I'm thinking of it's a couple of blocks down. It's close okay. to Los Cinco Puntos. Yeah, it's okay. like a, maybe less than half a mile away from Los Cinco Puntos. Okay. Um, I said, spooky coffee. Sign me the fuck up. And at this point, <laughs> I'm a little more confident, right? I'm like, I've written one piece. And then yeah. after that, they invited me to the LA Taco Slack, which is like the virtual, di- like the newsroom. And then that's where the story that's continued. Great. I think yeah. I'm like 10 or nine stories in, which isn't much because then I started my video work. So right. it kind of evolved into into a little bit uh, different than writing, but I've been enjoying it so much. That's like everybody. I think I feel like that's a lot of uh, people on social media's dream of like, I'm going to make the perfect post and someone <laughs> from this website is going to notice it. And it actually happened to you. <laughs> that's the thing. I did not. I was like, let me just be a little nice and <laughs> yeah. help me just fool out because clearly people are upset. <laughs> at him and then yeah so much abuse came from that though i mean which i love because low-key i come from a mother that loves to fight and not even in a toxic way like we we make jokes like we're like sometimes we get really defensive and then we like laugh about it we laugh it off so it's not like toxic
sick, yeah. but she's like, I used to cuss into a mirror when I was little because I wanted to fight with somebody I didn't have to fight with. <laughs> uh, that's what I was trained by. So when internet trolls come for me, if it's the right Tuesday afternoon, baby, you got something coming because I'm here for it. I'm here for the trolls some, sometimes. And then I know sometimes. when to set boundaries for my mental health. I, I'm very happy to know that you were a theater kid because I was kind of curious watching your videos like, or are you a writer that learned how to be a host or were you a host that was like, I got to I got to put this on paper too. This is too much. People are like, a lot of people don't know my background, but I, I don't know if y'all remember Sábado Gigante. Are y'all familiar with Sábado Gigante? Like Don yeah. Francisco, that, you know, Univision, Saturday nights. It was the show I, to watch. I watched probably like 20 minutes of it, but I just loved the idea of it. It's, it was, <laughs> it's so great. It was legendary. Okay. Chilean yeah. host, Don Francisco, grandfather to us all, uncle to some of us. Father, <laughs> um, I don't know, just immaculate show. And I used to like wish I was one of the little girls dancing and like the little kids dancing <laughs> segments. I wished I like my parents would fly me to Miami or whatever, wherever it was filmed <laughs> to fucking put me in. But I let go of that dream because it was like, I don't think I'm going to be famous. You know, like I, yeah. I always said as a kid, it would be so cool if I could be a food writer. And then it's like, I went into my dad is really big on education and I got my bachelor's degree in English and I got my master's degree in, in education. Right. And so it was a big thing in my family, but yeah. it was kind of like this unspoken dream that I felt and knew. Um, and in little ways, it's it's coming to fruition, which one day I'm going to be an actress and I'm going to say it. I say it everywhere I go on. I'm like, listen, whether it's a <laughs> tiny cameo you know or a little voiceover we're doing it or you're gonna be one of the dancing little girls makeshift uh Gigante, which I'm down for. <laughs> but yeah i love being extra i love being on stages i love talking to people i've never been shy and i've always been down to like make friends or talk to people and so being able to do that on camera for me it's like it's like I'm talking to the camera, but I know I'm talking to a lot of people. So it's even more fun in my heart. Yeah. Well, I get that, that was my my next thing was asking you about what LA Taco Live is all about for people who haven't seen it. What we do, what I say in my little spiel every intro is that we make the stories that are published come alive. That's good. So all of the writers and all of the team, I owe everything to them because first of all, they believed in me to do this. Like, or they're giving me the opportunity, I should say, right? And everyone is so talented. Like, Today, they just put out a piece where they interviewed, I forgot old boy's name, and he's not old boy. Wow. System of a Down. Um, Chavo. Chavo? Chavo? Let's say both. El Chavo Del Ocho? <laughs> Nailed is it. Is he in you System of a Down now? I know, How big right? is that band? Special guest. Yeah. <laughs> Please welcome. All like heavy metal. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they just put out a piece about him and his favorite food, or taco in Los Angeles. So everyone is super talented in LA Taco. The owner has been really wanting to like kind of grow and has it's always been kind of like an idea to get bigger in media as well aside from like journalism right, right. i was asked if i wanted to host and i said a live show for two hours never done it but sure you know <laughs> and i think that's the cool thing is that everyone's just supporting each other and we're reaching out to really cool people that have done this and can support us it's all community built really mm -hmm. like for me it means that i get to meet cool people like you all and i've been a fan of y'all's from the piece that y'all wrote for Ellie Taco, the spooky piece what was the title of that the spooky piece by la <laughs> i don't remember <laughs> it was like 13 something 13 yeah. 13 mockingbird lane it was something that's it remember. yeah it was about the monsters i'm like uh, uh -huh. it was a long we don't even remember we, it <laughs> but i'm also grateful because javier was he's been very nice to us about like yeah. allowing us to pitch stuff and, yes. and and allowing us to write things more importantly because some people let us pitch things and they do not let us write them <laughs> but he lets us do it and he puts it online which is even better amazing and he's actually i found out about y'all through javier so shout out to javier because i think one thing i really appreciate to him is he gives a platform to people who wouldn't otherwise have it right Absolutely. like a lot of like yeah. like a lot of these like publications like only accept certain types you know like people who maybe majored in journalism or are actually writers uh, uh, in that way ugh, yeah <laughs> i wrote an instagram comment and i'm over here like this is why it's gotta be those are anti-black and he's telling you know but at the same time it's like supporting us and refining that right or like this information needs to get out there and at the same time this information needs to be palatable to a community yeah. and i feel like many times like some journalism isn't you know um or accessible to a lot of people so so yeah i love it and we pretty much invite the people that either write the pieces or anyone who think we think is doing interesting things happening in los angeles one time we were going to try the taco bell wings you know we have that vibe too but then <laughs> pandemic struck harder than it did so we had to cancel so right. it's really just about talking all things la yeah i like because it, it kind of feels like what la week used to be like when right. it was good maybe 40 years ago or something <laughs> where it was actually like people because there's 
I, maybe I we, we've all got to censor ourselves in this, but but uh, but I don't want to call anybody out. Some of the other websites that we've tried uh, connecting with around Los Angeles. Let's just say yeah. uh, their names might also start with the letters L A, but don't end in Taco. <laughs> and they're just it, it's exactly that. Like it feels like oh, you didn't go to I, whatever journalism school. Like we why would you why would we feature you? Why would we let you write for us if you haven't been published in the yeah. wall street journal already yeah it does it feels very equal and welcoming at la taco it def- and that's what it is i think that a lot of folks come in being nervous and then it's just like oh shit this is a dope ass group of people <laughs> who are also like hard workers right and who who yeah. have, have earned the merit to like be on really cool other publications but it's not like it's not elitist yeah. um, and it's not gatekeeping um from these opportunities so yes. I, I love it i yeah when we went to i i you know we, we were invited over for the show and i kind of didn't know what to expect and suddenly we we're walking in this old like a craftsman home and we go into the basement <laughs> and i like each step of the way i'm like i have no idea what's gonna happen <laughs> next and you're right like it's it was everybody was supporting each other and it was just like it wasn't a you know it's a small group of people doing this but everyone was super friendly everyone was super nice and i'm like oh this is the way that it should be done like everybody is just sort of on their own like (laughs) a couple people were (laughs) this is the way it should be always yeah but it it felt very like like a like a little community that ali taco built that i was like super happy that just like dip a toe in was so cool yeah it was cool and that studio is uh, mod pod studios in pasadena so it's actually a space we're renting but i had the same experience when i I walked in i was like am i about to get kidnapped and taken yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah, you, we were <laughs> when we walked in they're like well <laughs> you're gonna be right, you're going in the basement know. soon yeah i've seen that part of the zodiac i remember the basements are not good i wanted to ask like you have done a lot of interviews and you've talked to you know creators and people of influence and then just like regular people H- has your idea or any beliefs you had about the city sort of shifted or have you learned anything new about la I think if anything, it just reinforced my perception that LA is made of hustlers. Yeah. To be honest, because I know my own experience and I know like my generation, like my family and, and art, their migrant story to Los Angeles. But I just, when I tell you that I am baffled and also like proud to know, and it's not just Latinx folks, right? But yeah. I feel like the majority of the folks that we have had do identify as Latino. And there's, all, there's been other people, but the business owners that come on and talk about like, oh, the pandemic happened, lost my job. So started a brewery, you know, the pandemic <laughs> happened, lost my job. So started a botanical line. Like I just think black indigenous people of color in general, like in Los Angeles specifically are fucking hustlers. Like yeah. I feel like it just reinforced that idea that I know to be true yeah. um, more than anything. It has also introduced me to, to the ways in which LA has shifted, right? When I hear, mm-hmm. like, when we had you all on and just talking about, like, the 1800s and, like, communities or when we think about, like, the Japanese, the Jewish yeah. communities that were here not that long ago, but kind of long ago, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> long enough for us, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yourself. that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I'm I'm 200 years old, so it's uh, this is, like, nothing to me. <laughs> I'm glad that you've got that in. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it just, it just shows me that the city is full. I, I know we see it in movies where it's like, I'm moving to L.A. and yeah. Hollywood to become a star. But I'm like, the people that are already here are stars in their yeah. own way, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, and now I get why everyone wants to be, why everyone has been thirsty to come here. Like, we're yeah. a pretty dope ass bunch. <laughs> yeah, it, it. I mean, it's always been for for almost a century now. Like, you come to the West, you come to California, you come to Southern California, and you could reinvent yourself, and you get here, and you can't just be lazy and sit by the beach. Like, you, you get here, and then you start working. Some, some people and that's can. like. <laughs> that's what we were talking about in that one episode we did wh- where we had people write in about what L.A. I don't even remember what we asked them, but we were talking about Los Angeles, and it, it's kind of like a everybody's trying to win the lottery in a certain way, like a different, a different, not maybe sometimes literally the lottery, but like the lottery <laughs> to you, whatever you think, like the pinnacle of your success is, and you just keep trying. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, depressing. It is. But yeah. for all of us, it's home and it's like, whatever yeah. happens is like fulfilling that. Right. Yeah. But that's yeah. so true. I can't imagine leaving cross country and coming here trying to be an actress and like having to work as like you know like leaving at home where maybe you might be comfortable and i don't even know their experience and all the perception i have i mean i've been to the midwest and shit for a little bit but it's not like i've lived or know those people's lives but right (laughs) to be from here originally is like a really good feeling to know that i have everything at my fingertips if Mm -hmm. i wanted to yeah even if like you give up on everything if you have to give up on everything like you're still 
well, I'll just go back to my normal day job still in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty fucking lucky. Sometimes I think like, what would it be like if I was born in Montana? Yeah. yeah, I wouldn't know the difference, but then I would dream about these places. And then imagine dreaming about Hollywood and getting to Hollywood. I laugh about that shit all the time. It's even better than I thought. I'm like, look at the dirtiest sewer ever. Yeah. And that's Hollywood. Okay. like, wow. wow. That's the biggest rat I've ever seen. Cool. Is that a two story Hooters? <laughs> I've made it, but it, it's, it's people coming here for the dreams. It's also people coming here. Just like, I think that I could, I think my country sucks. And I think that America and California is pretty like, I think I can, I have a, a shot at just like having a life that see like all uh, from my, what I've heard sounds pretty nice. And like, everybody's <laughs> just gunning it for like, I think I can hit my ideal there. And that's something about, and, uh, about the city that I, I uh, I, I ran out of words. Uh, uh, <laughs> you, you just pass out. <laughs> my grandmother migrated here in the late 80s. My mom's, my maternal grandmother. Yeah. And I don't know why I have an extra. I've, she's like the queen in my eyes. Like she yeah. passed away in 2009. So rest in peace. But rest in peace. I have this utmost respect for her because that's a given, right? Like that yeah. that's the narrative we know. You come yeah. here for your dreams. I had to interview her for like a Chicano studies class like <laughs> freshman year in college, all about her migration story. And she said in Spanish, she's like, I didn't want to come. And I don't know, I'm like, you're a bad bitch. Like my grandma's not a bitch. Again, see, in terms of endearment, call my mom a bitch, but I don't mean it like that. I was interviewing her and we have it somewhere in a tape somewhere. But she's like... I didn't want to come. She said, and my grandma was dramatic as well. The yeah. apples falling far from the trees. And the roots. <laughs> she said, when they brought me here, they tried taking me to a Chinese restaurant because in Mexicali, where she was from, Chinese food is also popping because uh -huh. there's Chinese migrants that migrated to Mexicali. She said, they took me to try to impress me. She said, I fell asleep at the table. And I said, <laughs> listen, when you know where you're from and you want to stay there, you fucking know. And like, obviously time passed and she settled and she was happy. <laughs> But at first, she's like, fuck LA. <laughs> like, I was happy in Mexicali. I just came because all my kids came. So that's that. The, the, the Chinese food was so below her standards that she <laughs> fell asleep. And the way she, like, reacted it in the video, too. She was a little older, obviously, a lot older. Yeah. She was, like, like, acting it out, essentially. She's like, I fell asleep on the table like she wanted me to know I was <laughs> bored by Los Angeles and whatever it had to offer immediately. So for some... LA shit, but you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. God bless those people. <laughs> well, a tougher person than me for sure. Be like, <laughs> meh. Not a big deal. And this was my big question I had for you. As our current representative of East Los Angeles, being you, so say a white guy in his mid thirties. What does he look like? Long reddish hair, glasses, <laughs> devilishly handsome. I know. Um, I don't know this guy. I never no, never seen that. You have. Yeah, I guess my hair is more auburn. Um, but so say someone like this fabulous specimen <laughs> moves to East Los Angeles or, or somewhere where most people don't necessarily look like this person. What is the balance? Because there's so much worry about gentrifying neighborhoods and all this stuff. What is the balance of someone moving into someone like that person moving into a neighborhood like that and being a good member of the community without ru like ruining things? <sighs> Oh, that was a really big sigh. <laughs> that, that that was might, really I, I, yeah, I think I have my answer. Yeah. <laughs> There's two parts to this question. Yeah. There's the activist youth me that's like, just stay out. <laughs> <laughs> Quick answer. <laughs> the, the understanding of the ways that um, people are displaced, the people from LA have to move for, you know, increasing rents and all that. That person who's responding thinks the balance is having a really big awareness of the community you're in and of the people in it and of your behaviors. So I think we had someone on the show named Josh Scherer, who is like a really big YouTuber. And I really like the way he said it. Cause I asked him if, um, if he could respond to criticism about, about being white and cooking foods that were cultural and like mm -hmm. people who are like, you're, 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 um, what is it called? You're appropriating or yeah. um, culture and food. And he said, I just think some people who are, I don't even know why I'm afraid to say this. Why am I saying this? White people need to. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find like a very like calculated and strategic way. White people need to have shame when interacting in certain spaces. And what he meant by that was just like not taking over and not giving credit where credit is due. And obviously, we were talking about his specific situation and being a chef and all that. Because um, I brought up that whole situation. I think it was in Echo Park where there was a restaurant selling Popeye's chicken with their chicken and waffles. And like 
like at a way more expensive price. Mm. Look it up. Mm. It happens. But yeah, I think the balance is just being, being aware. So for me, the way that I've experienced it is I've noticed the way I've gotten stared at in like certain spaces and certain coffee shops when there's like predominantly white folks in there and I mm. walk in. It's kind of just like, so I think just an awareness. And then also, yeah, it's a tough question. You you yeah. stuck me and I, I'm usually not stuck. Okay. Hey, um, we win. <laughs> <laughs> I think just an overall awareness is super yeah. important. And, and just an understanding that if people are upset at you, it's just what it's going to be. You know, yeah. like if there are, because there's generations of like trauma that comes from being displaced. You know, there's generations of trauma people experience migrating to the U.S., first of all, which like a lot of like L.A. is like a migrant community or generations of, of folks who migrated. It's like a lot of people who are are displacing, it, whether intentionally or unintentionally, because there are some folks who intentionally are like, yeah. we're fucking moving in and we're displacing. Yeah. You know, like there's that. There's that yeah. matters, too. But the impact always matters. So I think just that awareness and that patience, I think, is what, what I would say would be most important. And then always supporting local, right? Yeah. Like always never trivializing it. We did have a coffee shop that I got into like a major internet fight with. I've never even been there since. Um, and I know that like some activists apparently were accused of like breaking their window. I was, I can neither confirm nor deny that I knew anybody. And I'm <laughs> in that jokingly, I really don't know who it was, but they moved in from Utah, I think, or somewhere. And they opened this coffee shop called Weird Wave. And they were like, soft opening like they were taking pictures of the person selling fruit in front of the coffee shop and kind of like trivializing like look how cute like that hustle isn't cute yeah um and then they were like oh like soft opening on this day you got to come to the side of the door they were clearly not spanish speakers and like the word that you had to say at the side of the door to get in was like just disgustingly trivial where it's like make the word coffee bro like why you gotta make like, why you gotta be saying some spanish i think it was like papi chulo or and it wasn't even that because even that isn't as bad as, as what it ri- originally was it was like pablo pablo's here or something oh, I don't that's... Know, something ridiculous like that yeah um and i was just like that's the wrong way to do it you know yeah. and i know community I'm gonna really write that down that <laughs> is that gonna be the password to your apartment yeah. <laughs> This is a new Wi-Fi password. <laughs> the easiest way I think right now to answer that question, but it's never an easy way, is literally just awareness. Because yeah. there's some people who just roll, roll in and try to take over and are just rude yeah. or trivialize or move people of color aside, you mm-hmm. know? And that that is like, uh, you, you're you a guest here. And then at the end of the day, we're all guests because this is also right. native land. We're also like inhabiting this land that really isn't ours. Shout out to right. the Tungba people. Yeah, that's always something like, because, you know, I'm, I'm from Echo Park, so I've seen it change massively over the years. And there are people that are like, oh, we're going to turn this old gas station into a restaurant. And like, that's a problem. But somebody who wants to come and contribute to our community and just wants to like help out, you know, any local vendors or like, you know, there's somebody who came by to do a lot of graphics for the, the school with, with the cat. Uh, that's great. Like if you want to contribute to the community that's already here and not try to change anything, that's perfect. But if you want to come and like, I'm going to turn this into a this like, oh, that's that's bad. You, yeah. you not from here. And that's kind the of cat were a tiger. I would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> and the, this this conversation is also super nuanced, right? Like I said, right. like, yeah. I've had instances where I'm like, mm, that might have been a little too far. But then I have to check myself where I'm like, I don't know. I, I explained to you all. My grandpa migrated and had a mentor or whoever that told him to buy yeah. land. And I'm in a different situation. I don't. I can't speak for the people that have been like, like displacement is violence a lot of times, Mm -hmm. right? Folks are left without a home and like without so much. And so that's why I have to check myself and just be aware too. Cause I, I, I have different, I have privilege when it comes to folks who, who don't have families who migrated here earlier and own Mm -hmm. land, you know? Same here, yeah. Uh, don't you hate nuanced situations? Because you have to be like... The case, One like, thing the show has taught me too. They let me do whatever the fuck I want, but I try to like do my research and I'm like, listen, everything is nuanced. Like yeah. every everything is subjective. Yeah. Can't be a representative. Like, I mean, obviously you're like, right now you're our rep for East LA, but I'm like, like I'm, right. I'm going to get I'm gonna get fucking burned at the stake. Yeah, the second you turn the Zoom off, there's, there's a crowd outside your door. There's going to be a fucking knock on my door. Um, but yeah, everything has so many sides to the story but what i do know is that like blatant disrespect is one thing and you could see it you could see it you know it when you see it yeah yeah it's got a taste to it yeah i said taste so daniel got hungry sorry (laughs) yeah no i gotta go to thinking about i'm thinking about uh, carnitas el momo or whatever (laughs) (laughs) i'm gonna go support Uh, them like hey billy i'm I'm thinking of these white supremacist carnitas that you were talking about (laughs) i don't remember the rest of what she was saying i just remember the carnitas part sorry (laughs) Wait, real quick. My mom was upset. My mom is like the one who will watch my episodes every oh. fucking week. She is like my number one fan. The first text I had from her when I went to my phone after being on Do Not Disturb was, you didn't ask them what their favorite tacos were. <laughs> I asked that question every time and she was 
upset. She knows the layout of the show so well. <laughs> she was like, you fucked up. You got too drunk and you didn't ask them what their <laughs> tacos were. I, I have answers. Okay. That's Warn great. her that I'm more of a burrito person. I've, I always, <laughs> we've talked, we've discussed this on the show before and I always have to be like, I, I recuse yeah. myself from the question and I come at you with a burrito. <laughs> a taco is a sample of a burrito that I'm going to have later. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a lot of my family saw the live stream and I didn't know they were all going to watch. Somebody just shared a link and so a lot of my family watched and they're like, oh you could drink. God. They're like, you could drink more beer than that. And like, probably. <laughs> oh my gosh. Probably I, don't even want, I haven't gone back to watch it. I usually go back to watch a little bit of the episode and I'm yeah. like, I don't even want to see myself. I skimmed <laughs> by and I looked really sweaty. I'm like, I'm not going to watch this. Why would I watch that? I've seen myself drunk before. It's not great. Yeah. Daniel you're watch telling it. me. Daniel can watch. <laughs> Which, how do I get out of this room? Would you remind me? It's <laughs> the regular button, right? There's no room <laughs> in this room. You got to put in Pablo in the chat and you can leave. <laughs> Well, the only other question I have is just where everyone can find everything that you do. So my Instagram is at Hungry in East Los. What else do I have? Wow, on YouTube. LA Taco Live. Maybe. Right, yeah, you can find YouTube.com <laughs> YouTube slash LA Taco. I am the host of the LA Taco Live show, but I also, um, we're actually going to wrap up a series that I loved. I did a series sponsored by White Claw called Hanging with Taqueros. Yeah. So I'm also the host of that series uh, where we visit taco trucks and learn about the people making the tacos. Oh, it's, fun. it's a great series. I've, um, seen, I've seen a couple of them. They're really Yeah, great. it's a lot of fun too. It's a good time. Yeah. That's actually how I started like the whole video work with LA right. Taco, which was hilarious. Like, you want to host a, a series? I was like... <laughs> Sure. <laughs> YouTube.com slash LA Taco, Hungry and Islos. I'm also on Twitter at Lauda de Islos. I'm on TikTok. <laughs> Also oh. hungry and East Los, okay? <laughs> I don't really TikTok, but I'm starting to. Let us know how it goes and if it's fun, because yeah. we're we're curious. So let us know. Yeah, we'll be even later than you. <laughs> I refuse to join during the pandemic the same way I refuse to bake banana bread. I refuse to do any of those challenges. Uh, you're making me hungry again. <laughs> <laughs> Late last year, someone was like, you're not on TikTok? And I was like, fuck. I, guess uh, I just got a vine. <laughs> the youth is calling, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> I only have like 75 followers. So I'm going to go viral. We'll see. Could, could we still do periscope <laughs> Is that? i don't think i ever joined it that's the one where you could like just switch live shit right i, yeah. I think periscope lasted for like two weeks <laughs> What was the one people got really fit popular on Vine? Vine, yeah. Oh, I don't want to make a Vine yeah. for the life of me. I loved watching them and I sat there with a little notebook like, okay, here are my 100 Vine ideas. And the, the page was blank <laughs> and I never joined Vine. Well, thank you so much for yeah, uh, being on our show. It was a pleasure and I hope to we get to uh, chat again and uh, watch a certain member of our quartet get monstrously drunk. Listen, we're having you back on the show. Like if Love we don't, to. I'm fighting everybody because this needs to be a common thing. Like it was such, I just want to keep Keep learning from y'all. I felt like I was in school again, but like drinking. <laughs> so everybody's school again. Yeah. <laughs> Just like school. <laughs> thank you all so much. Yeah, thanks yeah, for having thank us you. and for yeah. doing this also. Yes, of course. Y'all didn't answer my taco question. I don't know if we have uh, more time. I, okay, I'm going to give... I was waiting. She's waiting for <laughs> She knew I was going to uh, yeah. talk to y'all tonight. Yeah. Okay. She's right next to the computer. I, I have listening. my I have my, my answer ready to go. So okay. I'm only going to talk burritos. And my favorite, I love chili relleno burrito. There's uh -huh. uh, the Cactus Taqueria on uh, Woodman in Sherman Oaks okay. is good, but they have vermin. So the one on <laughs> Laurel Canyon is and the good vermin to go doesn't to. taste that good. <laughs> but I also like the one from Las Fuentes and Reseda. Listen, you're introducing me to these places that I never frequent or go to, but the you best one get... in LA is the Las Teca Tortilleria. If yes. you ever in the where is that? Yes, it is East LA. Caesar. It's on a Ford. It's near Ford and. Cesar Chavez. Yeah. I will be there. That is one of my favorites. Leo's Tacos is one of my favorites. The Al Pastor Taco. I think, yeah. Oh, I haven't so tried it. Good. There's two, I think, or maybe three. But uh, Glendale and Temple, uh, it's, a, it's the one closest to me. And that one, I shouldn't have said that. And uh, Yucas uh, in Los Feliz is delicious, too. And I've been really digging that i've heard about you guys too yeah yeah um thanks y'all i kind of took over for a second my bad i needed no to no please <laughs> you're so much of a better host than either one of us so thank you i appreciate, appreciate it <laughs> okay Laura, thank you very much thank you i'm gonna stop yeah it. thank you okay i'm gonna stop it too uh, I, i'm gonna stop it too mm -hmm.